Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobby of the Man once again, and today we are doing another manga review. Today we are going to be reviewing The Dirty Pair. Now this is a 3-in-1 collection, or like a 2-in-1 collection, that is um, basically everything you need about Dirty Pair in a manga format. It kind of covers a few different uh, stories that the, character, that the creator made um, that don't have light novels as far as I know. But uh, yeah, the author here is Haruka, uh, what's it called, Taka, Takachiho, and the illustrator is Hisao Tamaki, which is the guy that made the manga for A New Hope, which is really cool. I want to pick those up at some point, but I don't think that it's easy to get them, so I don't know when I'll buy them, but I really do want some Star Wars manga. Now, uh, this is published by Seven Seas, as you guys can see right there. And the demographic here is seinen. This is definitely an adult title. There's a lot of boobies and a lot of um, kind of a little bit darker, more adult kind of themes that happen specifically in the second uh, half of this book. Now, the genres here are sci-fi and girls with guns. And I saw that they say that it's cyberpunk. And it kind of does have that whole cyberpunk aspect to it, like uh, the mega corporations and the whole kind of like everything sucks because mega corporations thing, but like it doesn't really have that grungy cyberpunk aesthetic that kind of is so synonymous with the genre. So I didn't really find it to be all that cyberpunk, um, but yeah. Now the adap adaptations wise, this does not have an adaptation. This is in fact an adaptation of light novel content um, or an adaptation of a light novel's premise into a manga. And uh, yeah, the premise here of this book is basically a pair of trouble consultants for the WWWA, which is the World Welfare, Welfare Works Association, uh, run around having these short adventures. Um, and we get to see the shenanigans they get up to. They're called the Dirty Pair because no matter the fact that they kind of solve the problem, they also create way more problems for everyone around them as they do that. So they're kind of like the, the Dirty Pair because they mess up everything, right? And yeah, we get to see three different stories here, um, which are all relatively fun. I mean, yeah, they're they're, they're okay. Um, generally, they're not that bad. The, the last one is actually the best one. The first two are not really that great. I really didn't care that much for them, but I didn't really dislike them either. So the plot line here is okay. Like I said, there's three different stories, each with their own kind of thing. They're kind of like linearly connected, as in like the first story happens before the second and third, and the second story happens after the first and before the third, but they really aren't like directly connected. Like it's not like one flows into the other. Um, so yeah, now basically the first one deals with the an evil, an evil corporation that's evil that kind of is trying to take over this planet and they kind of have to solve this uh thing that they ha that, that that happened where like a character died and they had to figure out what the hell was wrong with his character in order to um in order to kind of fix the problem and kind of catch the bad guys right that was okay then the second story deals with uh it's like not even 30 pages and it deals with these uh with the dirty pair and this other consultant that's friends with them who has to kind of get them to retrieve this um space probe that is at the edge of, of the event horizon of a uh black hole and so they have to go in grab it and then come out there's some weird space time shenanigans happening there which was okay i enjoyed the techno babble in that section but i didn't really find the story to be all that compelling and then the last one is a corrupt casino world and this jaded rich woman that wants to you know kill everyone because she has daddy issues basically um, and overall, it was fun, but it was a little too ridiculous for me because it doesn't really make sense because these characters are really capable as individuals. They're just like oddly ditzy. And so it wasn't really viable in my head that they would complete the mission, but then also like completely destroy the planet in the process um, <laughs> or, you know, whatever the case may be. So it was kind of enjoyable, but also not like great if that makes sense like the plot line was good and it was relatively okay there wasn't really anything too deep about them but there wasn't anything particularly bad either it was just generally average kind of stories that had a cool aesthetic light and like 
cool aesthetic, nice art, and relatively good characters, as well as really pretty, you know, <laughs> female main characters that were um, kind of like fun to uh, listen to, right? Or, well, not listen to, but like read about. Um, and now, yeah, that, that's basically it for the plot line. Characters wise, it's fun. I mean, Kay and Yuri are ridiculous, ditzy, very sexy kind of girls with guns. And their competence level is garbage. <laughs> um, well, actually, it's not true. Their competence level, their ability to solve problems is really, really high. And they're really intelligent and really able. However, they're just so dumb about how they go about it that they just completely mess up everything along the way. And it's funny and ridiculous, but it isn't really good, like, in, in terms of enjoyment of a character, right? Um, unless you kind of are looking for that, but I really don't like that type of character usually, so I didn't find it that great, although I did find, find it to be funny enough, right? And uh, the bad guys are all pretty tropey, but they're somewhat interesting, specifically the last one, the kind of corrupted woman that is rich, that kind of uh, is essentially a black widow, I really liked her. She was interesting and she was good and her kind of background problems were relatively understandable. But I feel that that story kind of ended too fast and I really would have liked a lot more work with her. Um, but generally the other two, the, there, there isn't a bad guy in the second story and the bad guy in the first story, it just kind of like evil for the sake of money, which is like not that great. Like that's a very boring uh, kind of uh, situation, right? Like it's not, not enjoyable because there's so many bad guys that are just in it for the money. And it's better when bad guys are in it for like a an actual message or an ideology that maybe isn't so wrong, but it's just badly implemented, right? So I don't know. I just found the bad guys to be kind of not great. Um, world building wise, it's okay. It's it's good basic setup and there's a lot of techno babble, which is fun. I really do enjoy that. Um, the world is very corporation heavy, like it's run by a bunch of companies everywhere, it, um, is owned by a company, companies have a say in everything, even the police. Um, yeah, overall, like, it kind of feels like, vaguely like Star Wars, but in a very kind of like, general sense, right? Um, and overall, it's okay, it's not bad, it's just not great either, which is kind of my, my, my feeling about the whole thing, right? Everything is just okay, but not bad kind of stuff except for the art the art is actually quite good um it's pretty it's lovely i i really enjoy the character designs it's kind of ridiculous that they're so like like their boobs are so high up on their chest but like whatever <laughs> it's not really that important however the action scenes are pretty good like there, there's a good amount of movement there's a lot of implied motion it's good the the cat character is interesting the kind of like tech is cool as well their ship is kind of weird, though. Because um, it looks like a penis. It's like a, fa it's like a really phallic-shaped ship. Can you guys see that? Um, but overall, like, the, the character design is good. The mechanical design is good. The um, female characters and the male characters all look really nice. Um, so I liked it. I, like, the art was probably the best part of this. Um, beyond the general premise and the, like, the whole girls with gun thing. Um, but yeah, fan service wise, there's a lot, like, to, to some people it might seem like a, like too much. I was aware that there was going to be a lot of fan service going in, so I didn't really find it to be that, um, meaningful. And really, there's not that, like, okay, there's a lot, but most of the time it doesn't really come off as, like, great. It just comes off as, like, oh, why did you have to do it now, right, kind of thing. Which is, to me, is kind of funny, but a lot of people would probably complain and say that it's not good, right? So, yeah. Uh, Rating-wise, this is lower than I would have liked. I, I thought that not caring about the source material because I don't know anything about it would have actually made this easier for me to enjoy, and it kind of did, but it also was a little bit disappointing because I was really looking forward to a really cool pair of badass female characters that were relatively competent without having to um, kind of play into the whole kind of bimbo thing. Um, and... I didn't really get that. Like, they were competent, they were able, but they weren't, like, great at it either. Um, the visual interest was definitely there. They, the character design is good. Like I said, the art is really pretty. Um, but the stories were relatively weak. I, well, I, I want, I, they weren't relatively weak. They were definitely weak. Like, objectively, they were not that good. Um, the storytelling was not the best in terms of, like, meaningful 
characterization although that's because this is more like a short story format than it really is like a a proper book right um so that might be partially why they weren't that good um but overall i think it's a good time waster if you just want to enjoy something that looks pretty and has relatively fun sci-fi stories but it's not that meaningful in in the sense of like it being really good so if you manage to find this relatively cheap i definitely think that you should pick it up but i don't think that you should pay full price for it because it's really not worth it in my opinion um but yeah uh, so yeah, I, I recommend it if you like, I, I definitely find it to be enjoyable, just not great. So I definitely recommend it, but I don't think that it's for everyone. And it really shouldn't be like something you go out of your way to find, but rather something that you just pick up because either you needed more uh, items on your, uh, to, to get like discount prices on shipping or because you were at the store and it happened to have a, you know, discount label on it or something like that. Um, but yeah, similar titles though. I don't really think that I've read anything that is that similar. I mean, aesthetically, I think there's a few things that I know about that are similar, but I haven't read any of them. Um, I, if you like the whole kind of visual appeal that has, that happens in Gantz and Gigant, you might like this, but the, the tones are completely different. So I don't know, man, I, I don't really have any kind of similar things to recommend. So yeah, that's it for me though. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, see you guys later.